Hello, I'm uh, Omri Canada Pilot, and in uh, this uh, channel, we recently uh, reviewed several uh, full frame lenses on the uh, Fuji GFX uh, 100S, but it's relevant to all uh, GFX uh, cameras. I can show you the camera as it is recording me right now uh, using the Tamron uh, 45 f1.8 uh, VC SP, whatsoever. Tamron's names are always too long to uh, recall, and it works on continuous autofocus, uh, pointing at my uh, eye. I hope it works as it uh, should. Let me know in the comments. And that's a nice opportunity to remind you to subscribe to the channel if, of course, you find this uh, content relevant and interesting to you. Our lens for this uh, fine uh, Dutch morning is the uh, Voigtlander uh, Nocton 50 f1.2 a spherical lens. It's a very special lens and unlike any other lens I've uh, reviewed, I'm not considering it as a full uh, GFX sensor covering lens, but as a lens uh, that I use for both one by one or six by six, if you want to go classic, or an X-pan uh, crop lens, and I think it performs admirably at these crops. If you want to try it for full uh, full frame or full uh, medium format 44 by 33 millimeters uh, coverage, well, it will leave you with some kind of hard-edged um, uh, vignette. With close focus you'll probably be able to recover some of the vignette, but it will leave some sort of a mark, so I wouldn't consider it as a full-frame uh, lens. But what it does on 1-on-1, uh, 6x6, six six, uh, x pattern, and even other crops is very interesting. This lens combines, I think it's a four, lens, four lenses uh, shoved into one uh, tiny and well-made uh, uh, chassis four lenses into one because 50 millimeters, even when cropped to a uh, square format or X-pan uh, format, is no wide uh, nor a tele. So it kind of in between and it depends on the subject matter and it can also look a bit of a wide angle and a bit of a, a tele, but this is the magic of most normal uh, lenses. But it also have quite a unique optical uh, characteristics. It's not a completely vintage lens. It does have the softness, it does have uh, chromatic aberrations, and when at f1.2, of course, it's not tack sharp. But it's not completely blurry. It's not as blurry as um, uh, vintage uh, 50 f1.4, not even like um, uh, the cheaper, smaller, like the double gauss, the planar designs, uh, like uh, Canon's uh, EF51.4 from the uh, late uh, 90s, which I've already reviewed in this uh, channel. It is a bit sharper, even while the open edit f1.4, f1.6, it will give you um, better sharpness, at, at least in the middle of the frame, where it actually counts in this kind of, uh, of um, imagery. But also, once the aperture is closed down to 2.8, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, it gives excellent sharpness on most of the frame, all across the 35mm uh, frame, but it will cover most of the uh, 1 by one or 6 by 6 uh, crop, and it looks very, very technical, very sharp, as we will uh, see in a minute. So we'll get to the images in a bit. Uh, just one word about uh, the use and the uh, workflow with such a lens. It is, of course, a manual focus lens, so manual focusing is what you're gonna have, and Fuji is actually quite good with that. Just one press on the rear dial when you're in manual focus mode in the mode uh, switcher, and you're good to go. The focus is very, very smooth, and since it's a uh, Leica M-mount lens, it only goes as far as uh, 70 centimeters uh, or two feet and something, I don't know, Americans, I don't know your measurements. Um, so it's not that goes for close-ups, but it, it will do in, in most occasions. The aperture is completely mechanical, it has nice clicks uh, at every half uh, stop. Um, and one nice thing about it, if you're into landscape uh, shooting, you can close the aperture to whatever uh, aperture setting you want, and then you can punch in to focus and see the exact hyperfocal uh, depth of the image, and that's one thing that I haven't managed to do with my uh, Fuji 50F uh, 3.5, which is my preferred lens for landscapes. Uh, but, well, you know, maybe it's possible and I haven't got to it. If you know how it's done, please uh, put a comment on it. Let me learn from you. So very nice overall tactile feel, extremely good build quality. Everything is, is made of metal. I think there is not a single plastic piece in the uh, lens itself. 
Uh, I also have the hood. It's overpriced. I got it with the lens. Uh, don't ask, but I did. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this hood specifically just because it's overpriced. It's nice. It's not too deep. It is very uh, strong and I use the hood mostly to protect the lens uh, from, you know, uh, bangs and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and it does that nicely and it's also uh, straight so you can put the camera and the uh, lens as so. Um, I, of course, use a uh, protective uh, UV filter uh, by Sigma um, on this lens. I use mostly Sigma, Schneider, BNW, and either German or good Japanese uh, filters, but, you know, everybody can uh, use whatever seems fit. Um, and that's it. It's a very small lens. It's heavier than it looks because it's all uh, metal. It's not weather sealed to the best of my knowledge. Oh, and since it's a Leica M lens, there are no uh, electronic connections whatsoever. So we won't have um, any EXIF data regarding the aperture uh, used or the uh, focal distance used by the lens, which makes this uh, review a bit hard to recall, but We'll divide the images for um, wide open aperture and uh, close uh, aperture because that's what we have. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna uh, sit down and write down uh, every single aperture um, that I used. Um, but since the uh, optical nature of it is so distinct and since the look is so distinct, it will be easy to uh, figure out what's what. Okay, so this is a night shot. It was shot at uh, one seventy-five of a second ISO four thousand. I don't know anything about the aperture. It's of course it says f one point zero, but there's nothing, and it does say fifty because uh, when I uh, set this uh, lens in the camera and when I registered it, I registered it as a fifty millimeter uh, lens. So let's dive in. We can see excellent, excellent sharpness. It is black and white, so we don't see chromatic aberrations, but we see uh, very good sharpness. Uh, these are LED lights, and that's why you get this kind of weird sun stars, and it's probably mean that it's not the widest aperture, because otherwise it will be a bit more circular, I believe. Uh, but it is rather open. I have no idea how much. Uh, let's go to 200% and see what's going on. And in 200%, we can see, well, some dis uh, degradation, but that's 200%. Regarding uh, crop factor, let's see how I cropped it. Yeah, it's uh, not even a square. I think it's a 4x5 uh, crop. And it's hard to see even yet because the uh, edges are, of course, darkened by the dark. Um, but we can see here that there are some sort of... Uh, Probable vignette. It's hard to tell by this image specifically. Let's see how it goes uh, in uh, in color And we can see a nice green coloration Some fringing across the uh, bright uh, white thingies um, On the dark uh, sky and we can see some noise. There is no noise reduction in this image whatsoever and it actually I've I haven't touched anything uh, in this uh, image. Let's go to the next one. Here we can see uh, an image shot at probably f8, f1.6, f11, something uh, around those uh, settings. And let's go to the to the edges. Yeah, so the edges doesn't look good. We can see a little sparrow here, completely blurred, uh, with some fringings and some weird colorations. Um, if we go to the middle of the frame, we'll see somewhat better, oh, no, no it is, we'll see much better rendering of, uh, of details. Let's go back to the edges and see what's going on like on this edge. Yeah, it's both unfocused, but it's not, the problem is not focused. The problem is the edges of the, of the image. Here we have the same problem with darker edges. Uh, if I'll go to lens corrections, I might be able to solve a bit and even most of it. Yeah, so no problem in the square uh, crop. Um, I really like this lens for black and white shots. I think it renders excellently. I don't know why, but it just looks so good. And um, when we go on with the review, you'll see some images that go even uh, further into the uh, more vintage, nostalgic uh, black and whites. And I think this lens performs admirably in, uh, in this regard. 
Uh, let's go into the details. This is 200%. We can see very fine details in the, well, it's not leaves, I don't know what's the word in English, it's not my first language. Uh, but we can see very, very fine details in the center of the image. I guess it's about f5.6, maybe 8. Uh, so the uh, corners probably won't be sharp because they're out of focus. Uh, yes, as we can see, out of focus and maybe, maybe some more. If we'll open up the crop, we'll see the darker uh, corners. And you can see that the darker corners are not... A specifically symmetrical and that's because the camera uses an ibis and the ibis moves the sensor a bit when it moves the sensor behind the projection of a gf lens the gf lens covers the entire sensor including the motion but when it goes uh, behind a full frame lens it doesn't cover the sensor to start with so whenever the sensor moves away from uh, the image projection you can get even uh, harder vignettes and that's what uh, we see in here and sometimes I would even recommend uh, turning the ibis off just to get some sort of uniformity which will ease the process of uh, repairing the uh, vignette uh, as bad or whatever sometimes it's better to work without the ibis when working with uh, 35 millimeter full frame lenses and here are some uh, images that I shot in a friend's uh, wedding um, this is manual focus, and I must say that uh, manual focusing using this lens with the Fuji GFX 100S actually surprised me. It's way easier than I thought it would be. If I'm using f1.2, I do require the uh, rear uh, dial to punch into the image and um, try and maintain exact focusing, but at f2 I can uh, freely focus uh, from the EVF without punching in, and it's mostly um, accurate. It does dictate some misses because things move and you know you can't win everything especially not at f1.2 on a medium format camera but it's way better than I expected it uh, to be. So let's take a look at this uh, very nice couple and uh, wedding images. Okay so here we can see they were moving and they're slightly out of uh, focus but when we look at the entire image it it doesn't change anything it looks good um, about cropping let's see what kind of cropping I did here now this is just the, the square crop but the fact that this image or the square crop of it is 76 uh, megapixel or so means that I can crop significantly into the image and create close-ups and whatnot from uh, one uh, specific image let's move on here we can see them stop a bit. And this is one heck of a crop. Um, let's try to go into it. Here we can see it's not tech sharp. It's not a Sigma 51.4 sharp. It's not a Fuji GF sharp. But it is sharp enough for this uh, kind of projects, for this kind of shooting, for wedding photography, for family photography and whatnot. And of course, if you want it sharper, just close the aperture a bit. Here's another image and here I uh, applied some specific uh, technique called freelancing, if I remember correctly. Um, back in the days of my uh, 4x5 shootings, uh, we used to uh, shift and tilt the lenses a bit. It's limited because you have to open up the entire camera, but since it's a non-electric lens, the camera doesn't know what's going on. And so you can take the lens a bit off and then just uh, in very tiny increments, tilt it just a bit so you can get uh, both the bride, the groom and uh, this guy over here all in focus while the background is completely uh, off. It's not tuck sharp, of course, but it's nice and it gives a certain uh, special feeling to the image. Here again, you can see the uh, same technique. Let's take a look at the details here. So we can see the tiniest details, we can see the lining, we can see the stitches, we can see the beads, we can see whatever in this uh, bride's uh, dress. And that's when freelancing at I think f2.0, uh, uh, which is amazing. Uh, we can see the writings and, um, and, and decorations and ornaments, everything here is uh, is very apparent and even the guy on the left is relatively in uh, focus and even the leaves here but it's not intended and I think I could maybe blur it a bit uh, later on 
and it's also great to isolate one specific subject out of the entire image. As you can see here, I think it's uh, f1.2 uh, and they're sharp and the people around them are sharp, but the audience uh, is way blurrier than with most other uh, lenses, especially with f2.8 zooms and whatnot. Um, so it gives something special. And I think there's, there may be not, not even a crop here. Let's see. Yeah, just a tiny, just a tiny crop to put them in the middle. And we can see though there are vignettes, it's not too bad for the image because those parts are already uh, dark uh, in the subject matter itself, in reality itself, and nobody cares what's going on there. So we can use this lens to cover the entire sensor with caveats. Here's another one, I think it's an F2 2.8, let's see the sharpness. And again, that's not in focus, but when it is in focus, the sharpness is good. I think it's even uh, wider than f2.8 uh, because I do spot some fringings around here and let's see uh, around here of course. Um, and there is, this is something about this lens. There are fringings, there are um, softness and issues and, and whatnot, but the general image is sharp and it does give a sort of sharp sense to the image. I don't know, it's, I find it a bit hard to explain. It's not as soft as vintage, but not as sharp as uh, clinical modern lenses. Maybe that's a good way to put it. Here is a city landscape uh, image. Everything is tech sharp. Um, the colors are nice. This is the camera nostalgic uh, negative. I really like this one uh, for specific um, situations. Let's take a look at the details. We do see that this is a bit unsharp, I think it's out of focus in a bit. Let's see how the crop looks. So when we uncrop the image we can see the very dark uh, corners to the left and slightly dark corners to the right and we can see significant distortion. So it's not the technical lens you want to use, especially not as a, a full 45 by 33 millimeter uh, frame, but if you uh, narrow it down to the one by one or to the uh, x one crop, it's much better. In this image we can see that uh, the distortion isn't that bad when working uh, as a one by one, six by six uh, lens, not here and not here. Actually this one is a bit uh, off to the side but it's still uh, straight. Let's take a look at the details. This is probably f16 or f11 and we can see the details are fine. This is 200% so it does look a bit uh, unsharp but if we'll take it to 100% it looks extremely sharp, everything is in place. Uh, we can see the grass growing behind the fence, no more rain, no, no anything. It's just, it's almost perfect in my opinion. I wouldn't pit it against the GF lens, but it doesn't cost as much as any uh, GF lens and it gives us the f1.2 which no GF lens is even coming close to. This is another example of the coloring that the lens provides. And we do see some vignettes in the sky, but let's try to correct them a bit. very easily corrected. Here's another uh, black and white sample. Again, I won't go into every uh, image because I think we've, we've done that enough. Um, here is a very Dutch uh, image. Let's go into those bicycles. Let's go to 200% and see how it goes. So we can see excellent details. Some excellent details all across the image all the way up to the uh, infinity focus. And I think from now on what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the uh, general look of every image and not delve into the details because I think we've covered this. Uh, so let's go. Another uh, Amsterdam vibe uh, image with the bike just crossing the frame. This is how it looks in, in black and white and I already said that I think this lens is one of the best black and white monochrome uh, performers. I really like the Acros with it but you know other uh, goes just as well. Um, let's say a word about the colors here because this is the Kodak Portra of uh, R&I uh, films um, which I tend to use. I really like them. Uh, I have no affiliations uh, with them. Maybe I'll ask for an affiliate links. I don't know, worth the shot. So if I do ask and if they do give me, I'll put it uh, uh, down below. And if not, just uh, Google RNI. Really nice images, I think.
So this again is the Portra 400 with a very nice Mercedes. Here is the same image cropped at uh, 6x6 and X-Pan. So this lens kind of makes this camera a multi-format full-frame camera rather than a medium format, but you know, I don't mind those um, names. It, it gives me the shots that I want. Again, great details. I wouldn't go into them just not to wear you off. Um, and the manual focusing, at least in my hands, and I'm not the best manual focuser, is quick enough and um, precise enough. And if it's not precise enough for you, maybe use the uh, punching on the rear dial. Let's just jump into the details. I think this is at f2, f2.8 maybe. I'm not sure, but it's not f1.2. Every detail is in the heron's uh, face and feathering, and this is 200%. And I think this kind of lens is so small on the GFX body, it gives you uh, the ability to get closer to things, mostly to people, but probably also to herons. Here is a lemur, it's at the Artis uh, Royal Zoo of Amsterdam. They are used to people, so I didn't bother him and he didn't bother me, but we can see uh, how good it looks and how quiet it is and how close one can get to the animal. Yeah, that's probably at f1.2 uh, or close to it. We can see the fringing even on, its, uh, on the animal's face, but we can see every detail and fringing can be treated. Um, I won't do it now, but it's, it's possible. Also works excellently with the uh, colors. The combination of the lens and camera with the vast dynamic range it, uh, it offers is amazing and I always use the DR400. Uh, it gives me the uh, closest results to film but also excellent results uh, digitally. If you want a video about how the DR400 works just let me know in the comments and I'll maybe try to put something up. Look how nice it renders the gold in a dark uh, room. Um, this is a panorama. Uh, of several images taken by the lens. Maybe you can spot a little bug here, but actually it looks quite good. Since it's a heavy file, I won't get into it. As a portrait lens, this lens is just incredible. It can also make sharp and very detailed uh, uh, portraits. It's just the, the bokeh master uh, regarding, you know, smearing the background uh, all over the place. And even though nothing in this image is completely sharp, it just looks right, at least in my eyes. And also as a technical um, man-made, man-altered landscape lens, as a topographic tool, it also works. Not my first lens, but it it works, it does the thing. So if I'm taking just this one lens for a day trip or whatnot, I can use it both for um, uh, topographical photography and for portrait, for uh, film-like uh, imagery, for vintage look. It's very uh, flexible and it, it, it just does everything, almost. This is a center class. Just see the details, 200% zoom. Uh, Every detail counts, every detail matters, every detail, every detail is uh, recorded um, in his cape, in the knitting here, in whatnot, in the beard. Everything is there. Um, and that's just amazing in my uh, opinion. That's a manual lens and it um, was shot from a boat to another boat. It's probably f2.0, uh, f2.8 or whatnot. Um, not the easiest scenario to shoot, but results speak for themselves. This is f1.2 and you can see the isolation of the main uh, subject from the rest of the image. Here we can see an old uh, church and it, it might sound as a bit of a cliche but you can actually see time itself. You can see different patterns of uh, um, building formations. You can see the uh, uh, where the pick hits the rock. You can see the new, relatively new uh, door. You can see the flowers uh, flourishing and, and going down. Um, you can see the little uh, um, green algae, 
how it's called in English, I don't know, and how things are kind of breaks apart. And I think this is one of the most powerful aspects of photography itself. It kind of pauses time and let us ponder at the procedures, what's going on with materials, with stuff, with life, with chemistry. Um, and I think it's not about this lens specifically, it's about photography and it's about photography with the specific tools that enables us to look into things. And it's more of the more about the camera than the lens, but this kind of combo gets everything together in a good sense. It gives us the sharpness to examine specific issues about the, the material, the infrastructure, the, the things that build our uh, world. And it also gives us a vast creative opportunity regarding aperture and uh, the fulfilled uh, this sort of special uh, look to it. And this is why I like this lens. It's so small. It's actually tiny on the camera. It can go with me for a full day of uh, shooting. And yet it gives me so many options. Here we can see another option of, you know, it's kind of like blurring everything but the uh, subject. And even it's just a whiskey bottle and, and four little cups. It, it just, it looks nice. That's what it is. It just looks nice and with minimum uh, uh, of editing, just the Astia uh, profile and a bit of exposure and that's all. And here we can see probably the most vintage looking image uh, in this entire uh, set. It's a bridge. It was shot at f1.2, of course. Um, and it's treated with the Ilford Delta 100 by R&I, um, which gives it a very specific film look. Let's just uh, compare it to the Acros. So this is the Acros, and in the Acros it looks much less vintagey, much, much less, uh, it doesn't have the same character to it. Uh, it's not more or less, but it doesn't have the same character. I really like the Acros for the topographic work that I do, and I think the Ilford 100, uh, this specific one by r &I, is better for uh, this kind of vintage uh, look thing. Let's put it back on. I can also uh, take it to the to a more extreme uh, version of itself, uh, and even take it down a bit, so it even brings back uh, some of the color. Never mind. Let's put it on uh, 100. Uh, and we can see the vignette here is uh, it's not a bug; it's a feature. We can see how good it looks uh, over here, um, how it kind of blurs the trees and emphasizes the center of the uh, of the image, the bridge itself. Um, and in my opinion, this is using things that considered to be uh, bugs, considered to be bad things, things that the lens shouldn't do, um, to our uh, benefit, to um, our creative process, to the way that we want things to be shown, uh, to be perceived. Uh, here we can see just one final example of how the lens looks when it's on uh, f8, uh, how sharp it is all across the image, and how it looks at f1.2, how everything gets soft, how the center of the image gets emphasized uh, in a bit, and I think it works much better for portraits, so it really demonstrates uh, how changed uh, the, the, the thing is. So. Yeah, this is the uh, Voigtlander Nocton uh, 50 f1.2 uh, spherical lens. It's kind of sharp in the middle, it's kind of sharp even at f1.2, it's very sharp at f2, f2.8, and uh, of course at f5.6, f8. Um, very small, a bit heavy, especially regarding its size, it's all metal construction. It's not weather sealed, but um, I'm I'm not too afraid about it uh, when it's uh, when it's training, and it's also small enough to put under your coat or uh, inside a relatively uh, small uh, bag, so it uh, works. This is of course with the uh, adapter I use, the TD Artisan adapter, just because it was the cheapest one, and I just got it uh, so I can uh, try the lens, and it works. I don't know, probably there are better adapters uh, out there, maybe Novaflex or whatnot. Um, but this one um, is good enough uh, for my use case. <laughs> this is actually a Pentax uh, rear cap, which works just as good as the Fuji one. Um, so yeah, a tiny, very nice uh, lens, nice in use, nice in hand, very well built, very smooth to uh, focus and to uh, move the aperture. And it gives a very special mix of uh, optical traits and abilities. 
very soft vintage look wide open uh, very sharp um, and technical look uh, in a closer aperture uh, it also kind of a wide normal uh, lens even when cropped to uh, 101 6 by 6 to the squ square uh, format or to the expand format um, so in my opinion it's both uh, telling enough for portraits uh, but wide enough for landscape for uh, environmental portrait and the kind of shooting that I uh, like to do really recommend this one but bear in mind I use it only for uh, one by one crops or uh, uh, expand crops or any other crops in between, but it's not the uh, full frame uh, coverage that you'll get from um, the Tamron uh, 45 f1.8 that's shooting us uh, right now, the Canon 40 f2.8, and other lenses that I've already uh, reviewed here. All in all, a very nice lens, and I think this is the one that I used the most uh, since I got it. So I'm uh, Weekend Lapidot, and you're welcome to subscribe to my channel, to like if you like it, and to say something in the comments. It also boosts organic exposure, but it's nice to hear from uh, the um, small but very nice audience that this channel already uh, got. See you soon. Bye-bye.